Greetings Minecrafters, Nonsanity here, and welcome to another episode of Stone Block here on the FTOG community server. Server where you two can play. Right now we've got a bunch of people. And it's been a while since the last episode. I've got a lot done, but let me show it to you. Let's get started. And my little friend here is courtesy of Thorgal, who uh, made this out of chisel and bits. It's a very good little chicken. And he guards the entrance to their chicken room. Look at that. I have been busy breeding chickens. That's what I've been doing since the last episode. That and digging. Well, we'll get to the digging in a moment. But right now we have the chickens. I have bred every chicken there is all the way up to 10, 10, 10. And I've got a stack of 16 of each one arrayed here in the walls with the exception of these three, Mr. America Chick, Men Infused Chick, and Refined Iron Chick, all of which are pretty useless. And I ran them a little bit to get a little bit of uh, each of them. The Mr. American Chick makes black banners, which I've got 72 stacks of them. Should I ever need them? But I don't. So, yep, the chicken breeders have been doing a good job. Now, we did lose all of the flat transfer nodes, nodes for a while. So they're no longer here in between these blocks. So I'm using the item conduit to do all the work. Let me explain that change. Over here, this guy is set to export, and he's got a, let's see what his, it should just be seeds. Yep, just seeds, white, li white listing seeds. It's the only thing that can come out of him. Uh, this one can insert on the green, that's exporting on the green. So the green seeds come out and go in there. Over here, we're also extracting on green. This is where the uh, chickens get sent that are bred out. So this one extracts on brown and inserts on brown over here. And there's no filter. So, it, But it, the only thing you can take out of the center block are the chickens that get bred up. And they go through the brown over to here. And once both of these two are full, the, uh, the redstone min upgrade outputs this House puts a redstone signal, turns off the torch, activates the block breaker. Block breaker breaks the chicken breeder, drops these chickens on the ground, along with the breeder itself that gets picked up by this advanced item collector and put into this small storage crate. Down here, you know, I could I could actually remove this and add the uh, chicken breeder to the filter, but I already had this from the previous version. So anyway, uh, actually, no, I do need this one down here because it goes to the block placer. And this one has a filter that only allows the block, uh, the chicken breeder to go down into here. The seeds that get dropped go up into here. And the chickens that were over here get then placed into the breeder. And it recycles. And I had six of them set up. I have them spread out so that their item collectors, which are set to a 3x3 three three radius, to make sure they pick up the breeder at least, uh, always get picked up. And they don't pick up. They don't pick each other's stuff up. So I had those six going, and you, uh, I'm almost out of disk space. I'm going to have to fix that. I'll be right back. And back. Much better now. I got 300 gigabytes free. I've been bad about moving my videos off to the external storage. All right. Where was I? Chickens. I'm done with the chickens. <laughs> I made a modular storage here from RF Tools, and in it I've got two 16 stacks of every chicken for a total of, so that's 122 chicken types. I don't have the regular plain vanilla chicken in here. Otherwise, there's 123 chicken types of chickens that you can put in a roost. And uh, the second page here just had lots of extras whenever I was making them. If more 10 10 10s came I just dropped them in here for just in case but this is my main index uh, as these things bred up all the excess intermediate chickens end up in these crates and that's what all of these are completely full except for this last one which is almost full of all the rejects and there's some in here that are 10 10 10 when I made way too many of something because I left it running I am going to melt all these down into 
in a, in a furnace and make just raw chicken, maybe feed it to a culinary generator. Who knows? It's a possibility. This was the chicken breeder. It's set up to uh, extract from the... See, it extracts here. And it will insert down here and up here. But this one has a priority of two. So as these breed, if one of these stacks is not quite full and it breeds the same type, it comes out and goes back in and adds to the input stacks. Otherwise, the excess go down here. And then seeds come out here and go in. So that's a great breeding, especially when you use a acceleration wand on it. That will get you the different breeds of chickens very quickly. But now I don't need any of the breeders, so I'm going to tear them all down. And uh, I'm set for materials for quite some time. <laughs> Now, I said I was digging. Let's go show you what I've been digging. Over here is a ladder. I dug all the way up to the surface, and here I am at 95. Uh, but as you can see, the surface is a lot closer than it used to be. We are in a very big pit. Now, there's nothing spawning down here, because all these glowing spots are um, magma torch, uh, magnum torches. And these dark spots are just lighting glitches. Up here, you can see something here in the corner, and that is a hole. Ah, yeah. I have glassed over the entire bounds of my area. All the way out to the lava. Oh, where'd you... How are you standing... Oh, no, you're just right at the edge. Haha. <laughs> I see another one over here. They must have been up here just before... <laughs> just before the... Uh, the glass was placed. I thought that was interesting. When the I used the um, builder from RF Tools to both dig the hole, and this dirt here was when I first started telling it to dig. I had forgotten to make it a clearing. And a creeper blew up over here. A couple of creepers. Wow, all the stuff's still there. Tells you how often I come up here. It's, I spent less than five minutes in this area. But then uh, all this was dirt up to the build height. And mobs were spawning up here like crazy whenever I came up. And I put out some uh, magma tor magnum torches, but not enough to really... I, I, it'd take a lot to cover this entire area. So I thought, all right, I'll cover it with glass because they can't spawn on glass. So I dug down one block using the builder and then replaced it all with glass. And the glass covers the entire hole as well, which means I don't get rain down here. And yet I have a nice clear view of the sky. Now, what I'd really like to do is coat the walls with sky blocks. That will be very expensive, but I'm going to try and give it a try, because, hey, why not? But I do have the magnum, tor magnum torches around. All right, what else do we got going here? This is new. Uh, the chicken, let's go down to the uh, chicken thing here. Uh, it's been rearranged slightly because, again, we lost the flat transfer nodes that allowed this thing to pipe straight into there. So I moved it back and pipes down there. And I just cover it up with some stone. So we got the smart chickens making eggs, which go into the dispenser, which fires them. Uh, down here now is, instead of at the bottom of this hole there being a stone spike, which is what I started with last time, now we have the mob slaughter factory from uh, industrial foregoing with one of these specter coils from a loot bag attached to the side. It grinds up the mobs and it makes liquid meat and pink slime. Now I've got uh, 744 buckets of pink slime and uh, 1,111 buckets of meat. I can probably solidify that into bricks and uh, feed that to a culinary generator too. The output from anything that they drop gets picked up by this item collector, placed into here. Just picked up some stone that I broke just now. 
it gets piped out of there. The essence goes down there. It doesn't really make much, but it makes a little bit, so I have catching it. Catching it. It's only 53 in there. It makes these patient bags, of which there are currently 24, and then all the loot bags go into here, which is currently empty because I had this turned on. Turn it off now. These patient bags... I take up here. Oh, no. You don't get that. You get these. And behind this wall, again, because all the flat transfer nodes are gone, I've got uh, input out of this and export into all of these. It also extracts out of all these and imports into there. So as each one of these open a bag, oh, they're so full, I'm not sure if they'd work. Just that one was full. Is it not set up to extract? It is. Not sure why that one was full and not all the others. That one's full. Take some out, give it some room. You too. That may be a problem with the system that I hadn't noticed before. Anyway, uh, it's supposed to extract the output and then send them to the next one. But if they're completely full, they won't have room for another star. So maybe I should turn this off for now. And keep some of these from filling completely. There's always little gotchas to stuff. All right, put them all in there. Seal that back up. So they, they go in there, they get opened, and they usually have just another patient bag in them. They drop down here. And they get sent to the next one. Or even to itself, I suppose. I don't think the conduits go back to themselves. But if when they open, they generate another star, that gets extracted and put over here. And right now we don't have any in the system. But they have produced a bunch. It just takes a long time. There's like a 1 in 10,000 chance every time this bar gets to the end of generating another star. It doesn't take a lot of tick, because it's basically sitting there idle most of the time. But uh, with this many, you know, I get a couple a day. All right, continuing around. Don't think I showed these, but I just made a bunch of the mechanism machines. I need a little bit of steel at first. So these, I put some coal in there and some iron. Some more coal down here. And everything's set to export downwards. So I put some iron in there and it goes through the coal and comes out as steel down here at the export chest. Ah, there's some dark steel. I had an alloy smelter and a sag mill, and I've uh, bumped them both up to their higher tier. This one has a capacitor of holding that I got from a loot bag. This one, I think, is just an octatic that I made myself. All of, them, all of them are set to pull from the crates above them and go down. This one and these two I actually haven't used. This one was going to be for redstone. This would be for diamond, and this would be for obsidian. But uh, I haven't needed them yet. Over here, using some of that pink slime that we got, made material stonework factories. Is this full? No, why? Oh. No, this should output to the top, I thought. Or maybe, no, they had the flat transfer nodes underneath them, didn't they? And now they don't. I never fixed that. All right, well, let's fix that right now. I've got some item conduit. I also have a, uh, yeah, nothing I want in it right now. All right, so you to you. Oh, can't quite get over there. So we'll do another fix. It's amazing what you find when you go on a tour. No, no. All right, so you, yeah, it filters to extract only the stuff that I wanted. But because these are drawers and they already have stuff in them, I can just extract whatever. And I'll only extract what there's, what there's a place to, 
It'll only extract anything that has a place to go. So make these all insert. And now they should all be running again. Yeah. So we're making compressed dust, regular stone, compressed sand, and compressed gravel. So they're all good now. And we can fill the hole back in. All right. Those are working. Continuing on. Also, to make that um, mob grinder thing down there, I needed, and to make the stonework things, I needed that pink slime from those to make those. But to make that thing required plastic. So what we got here is four tree fluid extractors all aimed towards that center spot where I've got a block placer. There's nothing in there right now, but I filled it up with nine stacks of logs and it would place them one at a time and these four guys would suck the juice out of it, pipe it up into this latex processing unit, which it's still got 67 millibuckets. It needs water as well, so that's coming from this sink. And power is being distributed here from that power cell, which got a spectra coil on the side. And that created these tiny dry rubbers. Take nine of those, craft them together, cook the result up in a furnace, and you get the plastic sheets needed to make uh, a bunch of the industrial foregoing machines. So that's what this was set up was for. Nine stacks of logs made all this plus all these stacks of plastic, plus the little bit that I've used. So that was enough. I could probably tear this down and never have to make any more. Uh, since this sink was here, I hooked it up to one of these wooden barrels. And over here, I've got clay. If I go and get over here, let's get some of this compressed dust, decompress it, and stick it in here. It will now get placed. Yeah, it gets placed in there. And that gets turned into clay. I never set this thing up to go fast because it didn't really need to. It's fine, just toss it in there and it makes clay. I may need more clay later, in which case I'll accelerate this, but for now it's fine. Uh, let's just get rid of this bag by going bop. Oh no, crap, bop. And there, it puts everything in there. And put these away. The dark steel I'll put in here. All right, what else? Oh, you notice this thing is shaken back and forth. I had never played a pack with Ex Nilio in it, and so I'd never done the shaker. So I thought, eh, I'll do the shaker. So let's go down and look at it. You put this block down here, the auto sifter. As soon as you place it there underneath, it places all these extra pieces and starts shaking the uh, things above. But to power that, let's see, go around this way. You have to put down, in this case, two of these stone axles and then a whole bunch of these water wheel, which I can better see from out here. Here they all are. I made a bunch. I wanted to see how fast it would go. So you place them down and put water source blocks up here, which flows down underneath, and I'm just catching it in the trough. And that makes these things all spin. It's interesting that some of them are spinning faster than others. The one here at the end is the slowest. I guess each one increases the speed of the one next to it to transfer all that power up to this guy. But really, I don't need it, and these things are a mess, so I'm probably never going to use it again. If I want to automate it, I'll make one of those single block si uh, auto sifters with the little guy inside. But I have it for now. I did finally make a hopping bonsai pot, not for regular trees, because I've got the wood chicken. But I caught, I made, I brewed up a potion of har harming, potion, a splash potion of harming, and killed one of those little specters that appear when you kill mobs sometimes. Uh, that gave me some ectoplasm when I killed it. I used a piece of ectoplasm on a regular sapping sapling that was planted turned it into a specter sapling 
put that in here. And that gave me all this specter wood and a whole bunch more ectoplasm. But then I found out I really don't need it for anything. I mean, its uses make the string and the ingots. The ingots are used to make some of the tools, this lens. These specter coils that you can craft only transfer power. See, it says transfer. It doesn't generate it like the ones you get in loot bags. And the axe. And this uh, lens is used to make the specter energy injector, which is what you can put power in to get out from these crafted coils. But really, the RF flux, the flux, it's called flux networks. That does the exact same thing, but does it much better. So I went that way instead. So this was sort of a waste. I also wanted to get some more apples, so I was out of them, so I put a regular sapling in here for a little while, took the logs out, stuck them in the chicken's bin, and I just got them sitting here for when I need them. Got one of these in a loot bag, so I've got some milk, got some water, I made this to do an enchantment on my pickaxe of Silk Touch. I uh, got the anvil. Let's see. Oh, yes. The top tier cobblestone generator is outputting to this compacting drawer. We've got 256 double compressed cobblestone in it. It's also outputting into this crucible with a block of awakened draconium underneath, so it melts down very quickly. That outputs into this quantum tank which is 14% full, though I think about 11 to 12% of that came from the lava above the base when I drained that with the builder. And some of it goes in here. This is, I think, something that probably needs to be fixed. You can make endstone by taking glowstone dust and whacking it into a stone barrel of lava and picking it up. But if you do this with an automated user set to one tick delay, notice there's 63 in here. I'm going to stand right here, turn it on. There's still 63 in there, and I've got 54 in stone. Well, make that 55. Yeah, that seems a little broken. <laughs> but you can get a lot of in stone very, very quickly. Which is good, because if I ever do those sky blocks on the walls of the hole up there, I will need a lot of endstone. Smash is testing. Test. Good. Uh, what else? Uh, you might have noticed that I'm wearing Supremium armor. Let's go over to the, the farm. Notice it's much smaller than it used to be. I swapped all the dirt out for this uh, fertilized dirt. I just recently made a second harvester, both powered by specter coils, and I got all of these tier three um, growth crystals from legendary loot bags from the chicken farm over here. That's why I have this thing set to extract, and so I set it to legendary, and it outputs into this loot bag opener and then the results of the opener get sent first to the trash can if they meet the diamond armor filter I've got here. Otherwise, that one has the higher priority of one. This one has priority of zero, so everything else gets dumped in here. And look, I've got ten more. So I did that. Not only do I have this block of 3x3 three three up here, but I've got, I think, nine 3x3 three three down below and this extra one right here. So there's a whole bunch of those making these guys grow really fast. Now, for a long time, I just had the central nine of the Inferium seeds. I think these are only, yeah, these are tier five. Those are getting harvested into here. Notice it's empty because it's all coming out into this crafter, which is tearing it up with this master infusion crystal through the levels up to Supremium, and I still have 15 stacks of Supremium Essence in there. That's after making all my armor, a sword, and a bunch of Nether Star Seeds. Using the Nether Stars I got from the loot bag openers, and the patient bags. Now to make these 
run, you do need to have the Nether Star Cruxes, which each take four more Nether Stars, and they require something that can only be gotten by killing the Wither. These things, Withering Souls, makes the Nether Star Crux. You need Insania Medicines, two Withering Souls, two Nether Stars, block a diamond. The Withering Souls can only be gotten dropped from Withers, so I did have to kill some Withers to make these guys grow. So you may have seen it over here. I'm using Reinforced Obsidian from Tiny Progressions. It's just Obsidian and Iron Bars. Very cheap. Witherproof. This is hollow on the inside in a 3x3x1 area with two solid rows of blocks above. We've got a mob grinder from Draconic, uh, Draconic Evolution. And down here, right back there, we have a wither builder from Industrial Forgoing. So I put the soul sand and, and wither skulls in here. They get piped into the mob builder. It starts building them. As they, soon as they've charged up, they get killed by the mob grinder. The drops get picked up by this item collector and stored in here. And I've set up this sound dampener to remove these sounds. Wither Death, Wither Spawn, and Generic Explode. Because Withers are loud. Some of the other Wither sounds have been turned off by one of the mods, but they are audible when you're close, so I just have it turned all off. What else is going on around here? I was just doodling while doing all the chickens and waiting for the hole to get dug. I did also use some of my Supremium Essence to make an ultimate furnace. The sucker is extremely fast. Actually, let's get a, a stack of cobblestone. Put a stack of cobblestone in there and blur. It is cooked. And I've only ever put one stack of coal in here. I've used this for a lot of things. So it lasts for a very long time. Drop that. Where does it go? It gets picked up by this thing. A dank null. Because I have the emerald chickens, it just needs emerald blocks, blocks of coal, and some lime-stained glass panes. That's easy. Makes five of, make five of these recipe, and you can make the dank null top tier. It's very nice. You put different things in here, and it can hold a vast quantity of each. I've got 40,000 cobblestone in here. Oh, I do have some sky blocks that I made by hand. Let me show you those. Oh, it's nighttime right now. Basically, that lets you see the sky. Those are going to be really nice on the walls. They are, though, rather expensive. I can't get the recipe in there. Needs glass. It's a lot of glass. Basically, one glass for each one. All right. I can make lots of glass. Two eyes of ender. So one eye of ender for every three. And then one end stone for every six. So I think I can do this. The chickens make the eyes that make the ender pearls and the blaze rods and the glass. And then I've got a fast way to make end stones. So I should be able to make lots of these. I'll be setting things up to do that later. Uh, continuing on over here, the glass I have up on the roof of my area. Let me. Uh, Drop this so I can suck it back up into the dank null. There it goes. The glass up there is not normal glass. It is this clear stable glass. To make this, you take stable glass and just craft it. And to make stable glass is basically just two of any glass together to make stable glass. So in this guy, we make the stable glass from two glass and then use one of those to make, make it clear. And that gets output. And so I have two glass chickens here, making it. And now, yes, I did turn off so that none of that glass is going into this guy. It's all going into here. Because I'm going to need the glass for the sky uh, blocks. So it's all making in there. I still have 1,734 stacks of this clear glass. So if ever I need any clear glass, I've got it. 
Uh, this ender chest that it's feeding into was just to take it to the builder that I had sitting down in the center of my territory. Which I've since taken down since I was done making all the holes and putting the glass up. I'll have to get it back out when I start using the uh, skyblocks. Anything else up here? No, nope, that's everything up here. Uh, the atomic disassembler I just stuck over here. It's aimed up. So that if I toss something in there... Nope. Just toss a stack of iron in there. I can pick it up. I have this here. I don't need to do it anymore because I've got all the chicken dyes I want. I've got one of each colored chicken, so I've got... Excuse me. Excuse me. I've got all the dyes I need. And I really don't need to use it for making the other stuff because I've got these two. So I'll put away. So I won't be using it too much. Oh, the, the sifter, uh, this chest has item conduit feeding into the block down below, this, the auto sifter. And then everything that gets created gets into that chest. I guess I should show. Let's uh, grab some of this. That goes in there. And then you can see it fills in all the sifters. You can see how fast it goes. And then everything spews up and gets picked up by the item collector. Right? Or is it full? Oh, it's full. That's right. Let's uh, take some of the stuff out of there. Put it in this chest. Crate. You can also take the Elorium. Because I have no need for that as a powder. I can just toss, start tossing it into this guy. See, it's silly how fast this thing is. <laughs> I'm just shift-clicking. And... Home stretch. We're done. Yellorium is good. Let's put the Yellorium in this crate because this is where our next project chest is. I've dug out a hole here. Let the dank null pick up all the stone for me. Oh, and with the dank null, if I right click with it, it places one of those blocks. You can choose which block by crouch right clicking in the air and then alt or option clicking on the block you want to place. Just so you know. All right, we are going to make a big reactor. I also have some Flux Networks stuff here. Let's do the big reactor first. Get all the pieces for that. Yep, that's it. And let's build a reactor. This is just going to be a, a temporary one. I have plans in the future to do something unusual with this mod, something I haven't seen anybody else do before, even though it's, I don't know how long the possibility has been in the mod, but I'm sure people have done it. I just have never seen it done. So I'll do want to do that. Once I found out I could do it, I'm going to do it. I'm, and I'm teasing. I'm sorry, <laughs> but I don't want to do it here because there's not enough room here to really show it off. You're not supposed to be there. Uh, there, there, and there. Yeah, that's it. Now we take the... These guys, this is going to be a... This reactor design is not for efficiency at all. It's just a temporary run hot, consume a lot of fuel, but make a lot of power. Oh, I still need... Oop, not there. There, okay. Actually, I do have 
a builder's wand here. There. So I'm done with that, done with that, done with that. We're going to use these. Have a power output tap there. Input and output there. Controller there. And just put some glass there. And now you can see textures change indicating it is properly formed. Uh, there was some conduit here. Place there, there. Get out a Yetta wrench. Disconnect those two. Going to extract all the time. Insert there. And we're going to extract all the time and insert there. So it is filling up with Yellorium. We can see it going up inside. This thing isn't fast, but doesn't need to be. Almost full. There we go. Full up. Turn it on. It's going to heat up. The, the core heat's going to go to about, what, 27? 26? Something like that. This one won't go over 2,000. The casing heat. Now this won't make it blow up or anything, but it does make it less efficient. Which means you'll burn more fuel, more eulorium, uh, per RF that comes out. But it's going to produce 7,000 RF a tick. And you see it's starting to build up here. So that's going to be fine. Now I have had it running for a while while I was doing stuff. For one reason alone, and that was so that I can power my acceleration wand. And this is how I did that. Let's put down this here and this on top of it. This is the flux controller. In it, you set up a power. I just chose its default name of on Sandy's power, and then click this to enable wireless charging. Uh, this thing is just a uh, power storage. Set it to the same uh, power. It'll be in a list. Select that, and it will take power from that. But how does power get in? That's where this flux plug comes from, which I'm going to attach to that. You see it is actually attached to the output. Set this also to the same name. And now it's going to drain the power out of here, which it did a little bit, but now it, this thing is full. It's going to put the power into there. And this is just the basic flux storage. You can increase that up to more. But now anything in my inventory that takes a charge will be charged. Like this acceleration wand, if I... I'm just going to accelerate this stone block. You still see its energy is maxed out. If I go in here and I turn this off, and I accelerate this stone block, you can see its energy has gone down. Turn this back on, and it's back up to full. That lets you keep that running all the time. Very handy. Now, originally I just had one of this power cells and uh, spectre coil attached to this thing and this plug, but this is much better. It's going to take the Elorium, pipe that in, and it's going to output cyanide. Right now, I've got my Elorium chicken here in the wall. Yep, that's the Elorium. But I can move him over and attach him directly to the reactor to feed the power in there. But it, you know, I put not much more than this in here. It's, it's only gone through that many ingots of Elorium, because it's a one-to-one. -one. So one less, slightly less than one row of uh, Eulorium has gone into it. And that's been days since I set that up, just so I can accelerate all the chicken breeding. So I don't need this. I don't need these right now. I'll put my wrench away, and I keep these in my inventory as well. So now whenever I do want to power something significantly, I make one of these flux points. I just attach it to whatever I need. And then all this power will be provided. But right now, I don't think anything is being powered by it. Everything is 
spot run by these ender coils. So really, that's just this. Uh, this guy has one behind him. These two have one on them. This crafter and this crafter. This is the one making the Supremium Essence. And this one is taking the Nether Star Shard uh, Essence, making the shards, and then making the Nether Stars and putting them over here. How much? Oh, we've gotten a stack plus three. Wow, just in the last hour or two. Very nice. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of these nether star seeds and the 15 of the cruxes underneath. I've just been slowly increasing that. And that is where we are. So we've done one little assembly here. Now, I don't plan to stay in this area. I mean, this little space with its little ramps has been sort of nice, and I did make the ramps out of smooth stone now instead of the cobblestone they were at first. I mean, I like this. This was very comfortable for my first few days here of getting settled and just spending all that time breeding chickens. I mean, like I said, I would go off and do little things every now and then, but most of the time was just sprint breeding chickens. <laughs> I'm glad I'm done with that. But now I want to build the permanent base, and that's going to be up here. How I'm going to do that and exactly what it's going to look like, I don't know. I know some generalities, but I'm going to have to experiment with exactly what materials I want to use and the overall shape. And so I'm going to have to come back with when I've got that going. But before I do that, I want to see if there's anything else I want to do in the base with you for this episode. So I will be right back when I figure that out. Oh yes, there was one more thing. This sword, uh, Supremium Stored, recipe is Premium Ingot, a Mystical Stick, and this Tool Core, which is a multi-thing that needs a star and three Wither Skulls, and three Emeralds and a block of Diamond, three more Diamonds and a block of Gold, three more Gold and a block of Lapis, and then some flint and the base essence and so forth. It's a pretty good sword. It does 21 attack damage with a 1.6 attack speed. But we can make it better. I made this thing, the Charm Strength 2, which is Charm Strength, so we're going to buy some Supremium Essence and Supremium Apples, which again are a multi tiered down to a regular apple surrounded by Inferium. Take that, and uh, that's the second tier. The first tier was basically the same recipe around this blank charm, which is block of supremium with prosperity shards. So just a lot of leveled crafting as, as usual. Take that, some prosperity shards, and some supremium essence, and we should be able to... Yep, look at that. 1.6 and 21 attack damage. 1.6 and 41 attack damage. That's a pretty good sword. It can be made better. And I can do similar things to all my armor. See, so we can give it night vision, absorption, wither resistance, anti-venom, fire resistance, resistance, speed, jump boost, miner's vision, rainbow. I'm not sure what that does. Gives wool a random color. Okay. Maybe that's done on shears. Does it have shears? It does have shears. Well, that's sort of cool. You shear white sheep and you get random colors of wool. Uh, quick draw for the bow. Triple shot for the bow. Mining area of effect. Attack, tilling, shearing, reaping, and scything area of effect. So all these little upgrades using this tinkering table, which I went ahead and made the max tier of. I don't know what difference that makes, but I got plenty of Supremium Essence, so that was not a problem. I don't even see them in here. Well, here's the one I'm using. The Insanium one. Which uses four ingots of Insanium, some Soul Stone, and a crafting table. So now I've got a good, really good sword, and I might do that for the pick as well. But I really don't do a lot of digging. This is mainly just a tool-breaking tool with... Uh, Silk touch just so that I can break and replace glass without having to get more.
Oh, uh, the first pig ingot I had, I put into frame. My kid likes the pig ingot. It's cute, so I always frame one. Okay. This episode is long enough. Lots of little things caught up. And just progression that took a long time to do while I did all the chickens. Next, we're sort of going to... We're going to start continuing together from now on, now that materials are all together. I think that one of the first things I want to do is make a refined storage system to access all this stuff, especially remotely. That'll be handy to get away from all these crates. And then I might get rid of all these sieves and do the automatic sieve, too. I'll have to experiment to see if it's fast enough to be worthwhile without having to make too many of them. I'll try it out. All right, so that's it for now. This is Nonsanity. Turn around. There you go. Signing out, all red. Take care, be good, and see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>